Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to use the USB flashback system on the MSI B450-A Pro Max Edition. Keep watching to find out more. Now you're probably here because you've uh, bought one of these boards and you're trying to flash it and you're trying to work out how the hell that the USB flashback button works. Unfortunately, MSI don't really uh, give you much information in the manual or actually on the website and you do have to really trawl around to actually try and find any information whatsoever. So I figured I'd make this video to uh, clarify some issues and I've had quite a lot of experience of flashing these MSI boards so I figured, hey, let's do another one. So this is the B450 Pro Dash A or Dash A Pro Max Edition. So do make sure you get the right bars. We'll be going through all that. Let's talk about what things you're actually going to need. So first of all, ideally, you want to have your system completely bare. So I'm going to take out my uh, RAM modules because we won't be needing those. Obviously, if you wanted to, you can leave your RAM, processor, graphics card, and NVMe drive, SATA drives, etc. connected. But MSI do say that this works best if there's nothing on the board. So certainly. I would go with their recommendations. You can try it with stuff on there. We have had people with a lot of success with it working, but obviously I don't want to show you that and then it not work and then you complain that it didn't work with all the bits on. So yeah, this is the kind of tried and tested method. So anyway, you're going to need a bare board, you're going to need a USB stick, and also you'll need a ATX power supply with a four or eight pin power connector for the supplementary connection. Other than that, that is all you need. Well plus a computer to actually download the BIOS on, which is handy because we're going to do that right now. Right, so the first thing you need to do is to go over to the MSI website. Now, I will put links to this in the video description, so if you uh, can't be bothered to type it in, you can just click on the link in the video description. But essentially, it's msi.com forward slash motherboard forward slash support forward slash b450-a-pro-max. So once you're there, you should arrive at this page. It may look slightly different depending on the time and date you're looking at it but this is the section you want to be in. So what you want to be on the tabs on top, so you've got BIOS, driver, manual, and utility. So we'll go over to BIOS. And depending on which processor you've got, you may or may not need one of these. If you've got a 3000 series or below, then you don't need to use the BIOS flashback. It should be ready straight out of the box. If you're using a newer processor, 5000 series, etc., or you just want to update the BIOS, then this is how to do it. So currently the 5000 series supported version is a beta, so obviously, do take that into consideration. If you want to go slightly behind the curve, there is a slightly older version, which is version MB, which was released towards the end of December 2020. The current one is released 2020 also, but again, is a beta and gives you the option for a resizable bar to enhance GPU performance. So we're going to go with the beta because, uh, yeah, that's the way we roll. Obviously, if you're a little bit concerned about beta, then go for one of the slightly older ones. But essentially, depending on which processor you've got, you'll know which bars you need. Now, if you need to know which actual bars you need, you click on compatibility, find your processor, so we'll choose CPU, and say for instance you have a, let's say a 5600, which is uh, pretty popular, so 5600 right at the very bottom, so it tells you there you're going to need BIOS version MC, so 7B86VMC, so if we go back to the top section, and we'll go into support again, in the BOSS and version MC is that one there. So MC1, MC, I'm guessing that's going to be the same because the other ones are all numbers. What's the bottom one? So yeah, M012, then it goes into letters. So yeah, you've got no choice. You're going to have to use the beta version if you want to use the 5000 series. So first of all, plug in your USB stick into the computer. And when the drive comes up, if it's empty, fantastic, but I would certainly recommend formatting the drive. So we'll choose format after right clicking on the drive. You want FAT32, that's important. And default allocation size for the drive. Make sure if there is anything in the volume label, you erase that. So if it says something like, I don't know, test or whatever, just remove that. And just make sure the rest of that is as it is on our screen. So yeah, full size of the drive, FAT32 default, default allocation size. You can, if you want to, do restore device defaults entirely up to you, but this is what generally works for me. So hit start, and you'll get the message saying that all data will be re removed. So obviously if there's anything on there you need to keep, now's the time to uh, take it off. Then click OK, it should take a few seconds and your format should be complete. So that is our drive ready, so that's awesome. So now we'll download the driver, so click on the down arrow, 
basically means download and save it to somewhere where you know where it's going to be. So I'm going to choose a desktop. That's nice and easy. And we'll save it there. It is a compressed file, so you will need to extract it once it's done. So you can either click on the up arrow, choose show in folder, or if you want to, just close down the window altogether, but we'll do show in folder. So there is our Windows desktop, and there's some of the files which we're recording currently. So right click on this, choose extract to, and then you'll get a new folder. And inside there is our BAS file. So we've got a text file, which basically has some instructions, and we've also got the MC1 file. Now this is the important bit. What we need to do is to click on there and choose the option to rename. And also if you haven't done already, go up to the top here in view and choose the option for file name extensions and hidden items, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that is there so you can actually see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this file. We're going to rename it totally. So caps lock on and it's MSI, then a dot, then ROM, R-O-M. So your file should look like that. You will get a message saying, do you want to change it? So if you change the file name extension, it may become unusable, but this is fine. And uh, we can use upper or lowercase, but MSI actually stipulate uppercase. So we're going to go with that just to keep things uh, as intended. So now we've got our ROM file. So now what we can do is we can send that to our removable drive. So you can either drag it, left click, and just dump it into your drive, or you can right click and choose copy or cut, and then right click and then paste. However you choose to do it, entirely up to you, but there you go. So there is our drive, and all we want on the actual drive itself is the msi.rom file. So once we've done that, we can then close that window down and remove the drive from the computer. Okay, so now we've got our BIOS on our drive, so we're, uh, we're, we're getting somewhere. So the next thing to do is to start plugging in things onto our motherboard. So on the motherboard, we have to plug in our power connection. So I'm just using a four pin on this one. That's absolutely fine. And also our 24 pin connection, which will go in there. Make sure that's in firmly. So that is all we need. We don't need anything else. No processor, no RAM, no graphics card, no storage. This is all we actually need to perform the task. So the important thing to do is to plug in your USB drive into the correct port. Now looking on the motherboard itself, this is your USB 2 ports, and the nearest one to the USB flash is the one we want. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove our keyboard and mouse one there, just so you can see a bit clearer. And we're going to put our drive into that bottom slot. So hopefully you can see where that is. So basically it's the lowest slot nearest to our BIOS flashback button, which is located on the very end. So that is it. We're pretty much ready. All we need to do now is to plug in our power supply, which I haven't done as of yet. So power to the power supply, everything's connected up. So now we need to do is just briefly press the button to initialize the actual process. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see the LED when it comes on. It takes a little while, but certainly should do. You'll get the light on the top of the board saying CPU, and also you can see the flashing LED, hopefully. Just angle that around for the overhead camera. So there we go. That is actually now reading the USB. What we're looking for now is a change in speed. So very shortly, that USB should change speed and start flashing a little bit quicker. It may have already done it already, I may have just missed it, but let's uh, leave that to do its thing for a moment. So there we go, after roughly about a minute, minute and a half, possibly two minutes, we can now see that the LED is flashing considerably faster. So what that was doing was loading the BAS from the USB stick into the EEPROM of the motherboard itself. So now we've got that rapid flash in. So we'll just carry on, let it rapid flash. And then towards the end, normally with these boards, you get a LED which just stays on, or you'll get some kind of power cycling happen, which you can tell by either looking at your power supply, checking to see if that's kind of redone itself, or looking at the diagnostic LEDs, chances are those will flash. You will probably find once it's done the flash, because it's trying to boot back up again, the CPU light will stay on. Now obviously, because you don't have a CPU installed or memory or VGA, etc., etc., then it won't go through obviously the full boot process 
So that won't happen until we put the components back on the board. But certainly, just be patient, keep waiting. Should be probably about another two or three minutes. So we'll let that carry on and do its thing. So there we go, you can see then that the LED turned off and the power supply power cycled and we're back to the CPU debug LED being on CPU. The light has gone off on this side now. So yeah, I think we're pretty much done. So the bars flashing section is all done. So I'm looking around now to see what the overhead view is. But yeah, that looks absolutely fine. So that appears to have finished. Obviously it's now trying to boot up the system. There's no CPU, etc. as we discussed before. So what you can do at this particular stage is as long as the lights gone off on the BIOS section there, the uh, the flash section, then you can quite safely just turn off the power supply, either pull the power out or however you choose to do it. So I'm going to pull the plug, quite literally, and that is it. That is essentially everything we need to do. So what you can do now is you can try your new processor, make sure it all works, but essentially that is the end of the process. So obviously if you can do, try and remove all the components on there. I've done it as well so you guys can see exactly how it looks. So you can see the CPU LED, you can see the BIOS LED, you can see the whole thing as it goes through the process. Now the whole process took roughly around about six minutes in total, I would say. Um, that's possibly being a little bit generous, but certainly around about six minutes. If yours is taking longer than that, or it just flashes a couple of times on the BIOS LED, that means there's something wrong with either the drive's not recognized by the system, or the file name is incorrect or something along those lines. So make sure that obviously you do format the drive and use a drive which is compatible. Ideally, if you can, an older USB drive, they do seem to be very good. Although I've had a tremendous amount of success with these particular drives. And this is the SanDisk Ultra USB 3.0. Does very well, 32 gigs. I'll possibly put some links for this in the video description. So if you are considering doing a BIOS flash either on this board or another board and you're just interested in how it works, this particular drive does have a tremendous amount of uh, success so definitely worth recommended i actually have a hook in my system box where i just hook it on it's a bios flash drive so definitely worth keeping for that purpose alone so anyway let me know if this video has been helpful if it has don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis you can always click on the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll be notified of future video releases so let me know if there's any questions if there is you know where to put them but in the meantime i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching